Hey there, we're Crystal and Eric, corporate remote workers, Airbnb photographers, and now full-time van lifers. We like traveling off the beaten path and finding hidden gems along the way. If you like that too, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more. And come along with us today as we post a video every day for our first 30 days in the van. What's up guys? We are in New Jersey catching up on a little bit of chores and we figured we'd take the opportunity to talk a little bit today about one of the most important elements of van life and that is parking the van. And we have even between ourselves different philosophies on this so your mileage may vary on what you consider to be safe and legal but we're going to share... <laughs> Legal. We're gonna start off by telling you each where we don't feel comfortable parking before getting to where we would suggest to park. Place number one on the top of my mind where we don't feel comfortable parking our van is at a concert. So tonight we are actually going to a concert. We're trying to get back into live music and we're so excited to go, but we for sure are just not ready to bring the van to the concert yet, to drive it into a city that we're not familiar with and then leave it there unattended while thousands of people get wasted and run around the parking lot. Not ideal, but it is a Nickelback concert, which is why you hear the early 2000s style music playing in this video. Who doesn't go to Nickelback for $12? You gotta go. You can't say no, but you can't bring the van either. The second place, and this is really where we actually differ, I do feel comfortable parking in parking lots for stores during the day, but Crystal is still struggling with that. It just still feels a little strange to both of us to be in the van for an extended period of time outside of businesses. It is technically legal, especially because we're always parking outside of businesses that we have used, <laughs> so we got a coffee or we bought a sandwich or we were using the gym and we just stay there for a little bit longer while we do some meetings or just get done whatever we have to get done. It just feels a little strange to me. I kind of feel like at any given moment someone is going to come up and ask us to move and that has not happened and there's no reason for me to feel like that. So I think it's just something I need to get a little bit more comfortable with because by all means we are going to be parking in parking lots sometimes during the day just because it's a good and convenient place to park. If we weren't patronizing these places, I would definitely fully agree with you. And I totally understand where you're coming from, but in the case that we are actually spending money at these places, I think that it's gonna be fine. And actually, one of the main things is that I feel comfortable if someone asks us to move, I don't think that's as big of a deal as Crystal does. I'd be like, yeah, sure. And then I move and Crystal is dreading that event to happen. It would really stress me out. I don't like putting people out or feeling like I'm doing the wrong thing. So if we ever get asked to move, I sure as heck hope they ask him and not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we share where we haven't been parking, let's go make some dinner and then we'll tell you about where we have been and where we would suggest parking. Are we really making dinner? We don't have to, I can just film about? it, I think, and then we can come back okay, to- Okay, cool. Welcome back. We definitely made dinner. <laughs> All right, we've already mentioned it, but by far our favorite place to park is in the driveway of loved ones, friends, and family. Huge shout out to you because you've made a lot of these nights possible so far. It is just the most secure feeling because not only are you in a driveway, but you know who lives there. So you're familiar with the area. You have facilities that you could use if you need to. That is definitely our preferred route to go whenever possible. And plus you get a visit out of the deal. Yeah. If you like that friend or family member, I would suggest focusing on the ones that you enjoyed the company of. It's a good tip. Secondarily, we have had incredible experiences on Harvest Host. We've only had the service for about a month. We've used it four different times. It completely enabled our trip to Long Island and made it so much cheaper than you could ever expect for a trip to Long Island. Beyond being safe, secure, beautiful, 
we had some amazing experiences meeting the hosts as well. And I had some major beef with Harvest Host before we got a van because if you didn't know, we did a huge trip in a rooftop tent and we would have loved to have a service like Harvest Host allow us in our rooftop tent a safe place to stay. So I was always reaching out to them and badgering them about trying to expand into allowing people with rooftop tents to also use Harvest Host and I was really salty because that's just not their business model. So I'm really thankful now that we do get to use it. I wasn't sure how I would feel about it, but by the numbers, they're all over the country. They are even here on the East Coast where it's a little harder to find campsites and it has been a really, really awesome experience. But you do have to be self-contained, so keep that in mind. Another place that we have been loving staying is Hip Camps. So Hip Camp, if you aren't familiar, is like Airbnb, and sometimes they have structures like homes or cottages you can stay in, and sometimes they just have camping spots. So for us, we are exclusively looking for that land, those camping spots that we can just pull up and park our rig and stay there for the night. This is a super convenient option because it is a bookable platform like Airbnb. So you're interacting with the host, you're seeing others reviews that have stayed there before, and you're seeing the location in advance. So you have a pretty good idea if it's going to be a good place for you. And in addition to that, it's also much cheaper than Airbnb because you are just utilizing a parking spot or a kind of primitive campsite on private property. You're probably looking to pay between 20 and $60 a night, similar to a campsite we've really enjoyed looking at all of the hip camps and we have an extended hip camp stay coming up in a couple weeks that we're really excited to do in the van and they are open to non self-contained options as well for our Midwest road trip we took the rooftop tent out to Ohio this was right outside of a national park and we got to stay on a goat farm and play with baby goats one of the highlights of the trip and you know has that lower price point so highly recommend hip camp for sure next on the list it's worth mentioning our traditional camps sites these will give you that secure feeling because you're at a official place to stay where you paid to book and they have gates and things like that but booking them has been such a drag i honestly hate this like this is the worst process i have ever seen for anything in my entire life we quite honestly just don't have the patience for the red tape that they make you go through to even find availability at these campsites, let alone to actually wait in line and book them and book them with the parameters. Something that we were surprised to see is that campsites have a minimum night, like it's a hotel, like it's just a piece of land. I don't understand why you have to have a three or four minimum night at a campsite. And that's something that honestly can be really inconvenient because we got into this lifestyle to be a little more flexible. So campsites might be a good option for you if you don't mind spending a little bit more time doing the research, looking at reviews, and then finally getting to book it some way, somehow, because we have not been able to do it yet. Last but not least, another good place to stay is actually Walmart overnight in the parking lot, but you have to do it the right way. So in order to stay in a Walmart, you are supposed to call or go inside and speak to the manager about parking your RV or your camper overnight. Most Walmarts will tell you that they have a one or two night maximum it's really just for a stopover and you also have to understand that if they give you the okay to stay there you are not going to be allowed to open up your windows pull out your camp chairs light up the grill outside it is by far not a campsite it is more just we are stopping over because it's on the way and it's convenient with that being said we did stay in a Walmart last year when we rented a van and we felt very secure we actually had a gorgeous view ironically enough as well it was like prettier than the campsite we stayed at literally <laughs> i was like wow i backed it right up to a mountain view i was like unbelievable <laughs> on the flip side you do have to deal with you know people coming and going kind of at all hours the walmart we stayed at was not 24 hours but the parking lot did get a little rowdy around 3 a.m which was not ideal but we felt good that there were you know security cameras up and that there actually were some other people car camped in the parking lot at as well. But not all Walmarts do let you, so it is a bit of a crapshoot. Prepare yourself to talk to the Walmart manager and then to say, this isn't a location that we allow that, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna have to adjust your plan. So make sure to check before you're banking on that Walmart stay. So that is gonna do it for today's video. Where would you park your van? What is your comfort level? This is gonna be something that continually adjusts for us, mm -hmm. I think, but we play it super conservative, I think, comparatively, but I'm interested to hear the thoughts of the, the group here. Yeah, and if you 
you are RVers or van lifers, let us know if there's anything that we missed on this list because we are always looking for more suggestions as well, especially as we take off across the country and explore everywhere and need a lot more places to stay. Thanks for watching. Like this video, subscribe for more. We have a ton more van life stuff coming as we vlog every day of the 30 first days in the van. Let's go have dinner now. And go see Nickelback. Woohoo! <laughs> Rock and roll! <laughs> okay, bye.